Bioenergetics is the study of how organisms manage their energy resources. Gibbs free energy expresses the amount of an energy capable of doing work during a reaction at constant temperature and pressure. It indicates the net driving force in a reaction. Enthalpy is the heat content of the reacting system. It reflects the number and kinds of chemical bonds in the reactants and products. And entropy is a quantitative expression for the randomness or disorder in a system. A change in Gibbs free energy equals change in enthalpy minus temperature in Kelvin times change in entropy. Only processes with a negative delta G are spontaneous, which can be harnessed to perform work. Delta G with a degree sign refers to the standard free energy change, which is free energy change under standard conditions at 298 Kelvin when reactants and products are at 1 atmosphere for gases and 1 molar for solutions. The equilibrium constant KEQ is defined by the concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium. The standard free energy change is often used in chemistry and physics. However, biochemists define a different standard state, similar to our body's physiological conditions. With pH of 7.0 and water concentration of 55.5 molar, the standard free energy change is directly related to the equilibrium constant K. By the equation, delta G equals minus RT, natural log of the equilibrium constant. R is the ideal gas constant and T is temperature in Kelvin. The standard free energy change is a physical constant characteristic of a given reaction. When the equilibrium constant is greater than 1 under standard conditions, delta G is negative and the reaction is spontaneous. When the equilibrium constant equals 1, the standard free energy change is 0 and the reaction is at equilibrium. When the equilibrium constant is less than 1, the standard free energy change is positive and the reaction is non-spontaneous. However, actual free energy changes depend on reactant and product concentrations. The mass action ratio, Q, indicate the ratio of product to reactants that are actually prevailing in the system under observation. When Q is less than K, the reaction proceeds forward. When Q equals K, the reaction is at equilibrium. And when Q is greater than K, the reaction proceeds in the reverse direction. The actual free energy change of a reaction equals the standard free energy change of a reaction plus RT natural log of Q, which basically take into account of the actual reactant product concentration. The free energy change for a reaction is independent of the pathway by which the reaction occurs. It depends only on the nature and concentration of the initial reactants and the final products. For instance, enzymes cannot change equilibrium constants. They can only increase the rate. The delta G values of sequential chemical reactions are also additive. The net chemical reaction that results from successive reactions sharing a common intermediate has an overall free energy change that is the sum of the delta G values of the individual reactions. Cells are not in equilibrium. They are open systems experiencing a constant flow of materials. To do work, cells manage energy resources by energy coupling. The use of a spontaneous or exergonic process to drive a non-spontaneous or endergonic process. Most energy coupling in cells is mediated by ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. ATP is composed of a nitrogenous base adenine, a sugar, ribose, and three phosphate groups. ATP stores high potential energy which means that the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP and phosphate releases a huge amount of free energy. ATP is a very high energy compound for three reasons. First, the charge separation that results from hydrolysis relieves electrostatic repulsion among the four negative charges on ATP. Second, the product of inorganic phosphate is stabilized by the formation of a resonance hybrid in which each of the four phosphorus oxygen bonds has the same degree of double bond character. Third, inorganic phosphate and ADP have higher degree of solvation or hydration relative to ATP, which increases entropy and stabilizes the products. While the transfer of phosphoryl group is a central feature of metabolism, Electron transfer in oxidation reduction reactions is also another important aspect of bioenergetics. 
The flow of electrons can do biological work through the electromotive force, or EMF, which occurs when two chemical species differ in their affinity for electrons. The electron affinity of a chemical species is measured by the standard reduction potential. The higher the standard reduction potential, the higher the affinity. The standard reduction potential is related to the free energy change by the equation the change in free energy equals negative nf, the change in reductive potential. n is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction, and f is the Faraday's constant. When the change in reductive potential is zero, which means that the reactant and product have the same affinity for electrons, the change in free energy is also equal to zero, and the reaction is at equilibrium. When the change in reductive potential is positive, which means that the product has higher affinity for electron. The change in free energy is negative, and the reaction is spontaneous or exergonic. And when the change in reductive potential is negative, which means that the product has less affinity for electrons than the reactants, the change in free energy is positive, and the reaction is non-spontaneous or endergonic. More details about oxidation reduction reactions will be discussed in a future video. Metabolism is the totality of an organism's chemical reactions. Catabolism releases energy by breaking down complex molecules, such as the nutrients we ingest, into simpler compounds such as carbon dioxide, water, and ammonia. Catabolic processes usually involve oxidative degradation. Glucose is a relatively reduced compound, which means that many electrons are associated with hydrogen, which has a low electron affinity. Glucose can be oxidized, releasing electrons that flow spontaneously through a series of electron carriers. Ultimately, the electrons flow to oxygen in carbon dioxide, which has a higher affinity for electrons. The resulting electron motive force provides energy to a variety of molecular energy transducers such as ADP, NAD, NADP, and FAD and transform them into high-energy compounds ATP, NADH, NADPH, and FADH2. These high-energy compounds can then be used to drive anabolism, which builds complex molecules from simpler compounds. This process is known as energy coupling as I mentioned earlier. Anabolic processes are endergonic, which absorbs energy. Reductive biosynthesis synthesizes proteins from amino acids, DNA from nucleic acids, lipids, vitamins, glycogen, and other macromolecules from small monomers. The energy charge is an index used to measure the energy status of biological cells. It is an important factor in metabolic regulation in determining whether catabolic or anabolic process dominates at the moment. Energy charge is defined as the concentration of ATP plus half the concentration of ADP over the concentration of ATP plus the concentration of ADP plus the concentration of AMP. The value of energy charge falls between 0 and 1. A cell with high energy charge means that it has excess free energy, therefore anabolic biosynthetic processes will dominate. This is indicated by the abundance of ATP citrate NADH, NADPH, acetyl-CoA, and succinyl-CoA. On the other hand, a cell with low energy charge does not have a lot of available free energy. Therefore, it will break down more molecules in catabolic reactions in order to release more energy. Low energy charge is indicated by an abundance of ADP, AMP, and NAD. A graph of reaction rates versus energy charge and at high energy charge, anabolic processes dominate. At low energy charge, catabolic processes dominate. 